<laughs> are, are you serious, bro? Like, Atlas, what the fuck? In my last video, I talked about the awful reviews from game journalists comparing Shin Megami Tensei 5 to Persona 5. And I made it a big point that you should judge games not just on how they compare to what's popular, but how it stands on its own merits. And this game... Damn, this game just got no merits to stand on at all, bruh. Shin Megami Tensei 5 is a game that, for every step it takes to improve on the SMT format, takes five steps back and just ends up being this creatively bankrupt game that crumbles under some insurmountable issues, and for damn sure don't deserve to be the fifth entry in the Shin Megami Tensei series. Now, I'm trying to be as transparent as I can be when I say that I was real cautious the entire time leading up to this game. It's not like I didn't want to get hyped that after 8 years we finally get a new numbered entry in the series, but here's the thing. The last two games I genuinely got excited for was Persona 5 and Shin Megami Tensei 4 Apocalypse. Yeah. When that first trailer dropped, I was like, oh shit, that's sick, and then I moved on. The more I watched, the less excited I got for it until I just didn't care for the game no more. It's not like I wanted to hate this game or wanted it to brick heavy, but you can't announce a game in 2017, then delay it for 4 years and expect me to be excited for it still. But saying all that, I can't even front with how unreal it felt having the next Shin Megami Tensei game in my hands, bruh. Like, it low-key made me just a little, little nervous to play the game, bruh. I swear, I was sitting at the title screen for like an hour, just telling all my friends how cool it was I had this game in my hands. Like that shit hit me with a wave of nostalgia, feeling like I was a kid again playing Shin Megami Tensei 4 for the first time. You know, and, and then I played the game and everything kind of just went downhill from there. But what did this game do so wrong, you know what I mean? Like where do I feel it really falls short in comparison to the games before it and the standard set by Atlas in the past 8 years? Well, uh, well damn. Fellas, how you fucked up the most important aspect of any SMT game, like, this badly? See, I already know I made some folks big mad that I said that because they don't think this series been on it with the storytelling, but hold on to that real quick and... Let me tell you something. Let me tell you. Despite what people want you to believe, this series has always put a lot of care into their stories, what with the entire team of the original games all working together to craft these great narratives about people and how they evolve and change as the world around them changes too. Shin Megami Tensei has always had this way of storytelling that's real minimal and unobtrusive in its approach, but impactful at every point where it needs to be that's really endeared me to this series right away. And Shin Megami Tensei 5 is absolutely none of that. Yeah, I don't, I don't really, I don't really know how to ease into all of this. The pacing is so abysmal that it just seeps its way into every other aspect of the plot and ruins any chance it has to be good, let alone competent. Like. Let me give y'all a quick rundown of the plot and let me know what y'all think about it, alright? The game opens up and you're a normal, everyday high school student who's suddenly thrusted into this new mysterious world and are given the power to become a Naho Bino. You walk around for like 10 hours going from point A to B, fight two bosses, and then get like 30 minutes of exposition dumping. Then some random ass demon pulls up to your school, takes away a girl and some students into the other world, and y'all gotta stop him, you know what I mean? Like you walk around for another 10 to 20 hours going from point A to B, fight three bosses this time, and then get more exposition dumping. And then area three is just a full ass assault on the demon king at his temple? Brother, look at the tongue, oh my god, look at the tongue. And after that, suddenly everybody's fighting for the throne of creation? Like, am I missing some shit here? I gotta mention that the team has gone on saying that this plot was rewritten like four different times. And at one point, even this fucking dork was supposed to be the protagonist, but like... Fuck was y'all rewriting when there's literally nothing here, dog. There is no sense of pace anywhere, bruh. It goes from the intro to a villain of the week type beat to the final battle against the last of the Demon Lord's army to the most generic law neutral chaos conflict I've ever seen in the series so far. Compare that to a game like Shin Megami Tensei 4 real quick. That game was primarily going from point A to B as well, yeah, but it was also laced with these smaller pockets of story that get you on your way for sure, 
but also exists to flesh out that world, showcasing different perspectives on Tokyo, the demons, the people in it. Some of my favorite parts of that game come from them smaller stories because it was immersive, like the main plot wasn't the only conflict going on here. It made me feel like I was just any other hunter in Tokyo, a part of the world that wasn't no standout, super special, ultra important plot device. Even Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne, a game some folk might say is a little light on the plot, that game knew how to disguise its minimal approach to storytelling by molding the game around this feeling of isolation and making each interaction with the characters memorable with these beautifully composed cutscenes. SMT5 tries to match that same feeling as Nocturne but like, it feels like they just missed out on all the things that make Nocturne good to begin with, which trust me, it won't be the last time you hear me say that. Because of this fundamental issue, every other aspect of the story gets fucked up. The characters, outside of these two, non-existent. This girl does absolutely nothing for 90% of the game. These motherfuckers that are on the box, they don't do anything either. These losers from the trailer of the game who show up at a very, very important part and are presented like big deals, they ain't do shit either. This game feels like an episodic villain of the week type beat trying to present itself as a fully connected and cohesive narrative, but without any substantial world building and character moments between each act of the story, the constant raising of the stakes just feels like it's coming out of nowhere, which makes me not care about what's going on because these moments don't ever feel as important as the game's making it out to be. Especially when for most of the game you're working for Bethel, the clearly law-aligned faction fighting the Chaos faction. There's absolutely zero development for the Chaos side because they're just the generic villain for 40 hours of the game. Which trust me fellas, we'll get to that soon. But you know, according to randoms on Twitter, nobody really cares about the story to these games. It's all about that gameplay, baby. So you best believe for Shin Megami Tensei V, Atlas must have put that whole heart and soul into this one. <laughs> Uh, it's pretty bad. Yeah, that saving grace of every SMT game that people claim is the only reason why folk would ever play this game. The thing that could possibly make up for that miserable ass story. It sucks, and when it's not bad, it's underwhelming and left me feeling real bored whenever I picked this game up. My general issue with most every new and changed gameplay element is that they just took things that worked in previous games and took away what made them fun or just made that shit needlessly complicated for no other reason than to force players to grind and pad out playtime, which, don't you worry, gets a lot worse later on. The exploration in this game is something that's new to the franchise, but these massive, open, explorable areas where you can, uh, walk around and, uh, find Nemon? I don't know, I really enjoyed the first area because there was a clear point A to point B structure, but diverging paths full of shit to find, and I was real excited for the next area, only to realize it looks the same, is designed nearly the same, and has almost the same exact set pieces as the first area. And this never really changes. By that 20 hour mark, I was sick of the desert, I was sick of the busted up buildings, I wanted something cool and interesting, but it just never came. This game has a total of two dungeons. Yeah, two. And outside of one puzzle where you're supposed to be pushed around by these fans, which are real obnoxious because the camera sucks and makes figuring these things out confusing as hell the first time around. That's the only gimmick they offer. The second dungeon has literally nothing interesting at all besides the time stop mechanic that only ever shows up in like three or four rooms and was never used in an interesting way. When every area in this game is massive and when the only reward for exploring are Mimon treasures and side quests, I gotta ask, what was so wrong with how exploration was done in the last game? I gotta keep bringing up Shin Megami Tensei 4 in comparison to 5 because this is a game from 2013 that content wise blows this game out the fucking water though. The exploration felt more satisfying, the world felt more fleshed out, the environments felt more varied, the set pieces more amazing. I love finding hidden pockets of content in the world of Shin Megami Tensei 4. The side quests incentivizing me to explore, the small stories each area tell on their own. 
Things that serve no other purpose than just to make that beautifully crafted world of Tokyo feel more real. That's just something that Shin Megami Tensei 5 never provided. Instead of all that, this game forces exploration on you in order to find Mimon to collect glory points that goes towards miracles, which are just like apps in Shin Megami Tensei 4 that give you more perks throughout the game. And even then, the places they hide these Mimon are so fucking basic. Not even mentioning the chunk of Mimon that aren't hidden at all, or the ones that are placed behind objects that you wouldn't see unless you play with the camera facing the opposite way in some sadistic gotcha moment. Most of the Mimon and secrets in the game are hidden like this. Say there's a broken building with rubble all over it. I noticed that the building is designed where I can climb on the rubble and reach the roof. In my head, I'm thinking, oh that's probably where they're hiding a Mimon, let me try and get up there. And after like a minute or two of platforming that felt real satisfying to do, because it's something that wasn't explicitly shown or laid out for me to figure out, I'm rewarded with absolutely goddamn nothing. There ain't a damn thing up here, so I jump off back to the ground, and the Mimon was actually just sitting in the corner at the bottom of the building the whole time. Thank you, Atlas. And man, the side quests are just a complete downgrade from what they were in Shin Megami Tensei 4. Yeah, that game had some stinkers like the collection quests or the ones where all you gotta do is walk somewhere and beat some demon ass, but there were so many more quests that did nothing but exist to, again, flesh out that world, it made you feel like a hunter, like a part of this fully functioning, well-defined society. And there was not a single quest that I had done in this game that ever felt like that because there is no world to flesh out. So every side quest was just go here and kill this demon, go and get me five of this item, I lost my shit, go run around the big ass map for 10 minutes and pick them all up. The lack of any real interesting storytelling in these side quests becomes real apparent when you realize the game almost forces you to do them constantly throughout the game. And I'm not playing when I say that either, because all these issues are just decorations to the biggest problem with Shin Megami Tensei 5's gameplay. The combat. Let me just say this one time before I get into anything else. No matter what Atlas could have added to the combat system to improve upon the older games, to increase its depth, the freedom of expression, or the sheer amount of variety that the combat could have provided, nothing they could have ever done to this game would make up for the fact that none of that matters because this game gates everything behind your character's level. Let me try and explain. Damage values in this game are determined not just by your stats, but also by the difference in level from you and your opponent. That means if I am a lower level than an enemy, I straight up will do nowhere near the amount of damage that I would to an enemy closer to my own, at no fault of my own either. And here's the thing, when I played this game, I put every single stat point into my strength. So it's not like my stats were just too low to hurt the enemy or nothing, I just did no damage simply because I wasn't a high enough level. The game straight up told me, no, you need to grind more to fight this enemy, so fuck out of here and waste a couple more hours leveling up. And this is something that's never happened in an SMT game I've ever played before, and the decision to design the game like this is just fucking baffling to me. One of my favorite things about playing the Shin Megami Tensei series is that expressiveness to play however the fuck I want. Like last year, my ex-girlfriend about Shin Megami Tensei 4 and so we played the game together and I wanted to do a no fusion playthrough where I play at the lowest level I possibly could be at for every fight. And it was great, it was challenging, it made me think outside the box and make the most out of the demons and skills the game gave me. I found myself using a bunch of demons I would have otherwise turned away and given no second thought, and I wound up appreciating the game's design so much more because I ain't never felt like I was stuck in the game because I couldn't find any good demons to use at any point in time. All those memories I had replaying the game in this way, that feeling of satisfaction whenever I beat a real difficult boss, I can't do none of that in SMT5 because of this nonsensical ass design to level gate everything that I do. Man, if I tried fighting any of these bosses at a low level, I'd pull up and it'd just be like... 
was told we would be fighting men. And that didn't even mention the fact that the game will randomly have the enemy demons jump in level, so you're inevitably gonna have to stop and grind, whether that's doing the obnoxious ass, uninteresting side quests, or crossing your fingers that you'll encounter these rare metama that drop you items that literally just allow you to level up for free. But wait. It gets worse. In the fourth area specifically, the level gap don't jump up 5 levels. It don't jump up no 10 levels. It don't even jump up 15 levels. This shit jumps from level 55 to 75. Yeah, meaning if you didn't care about no side quest before and just wanted to progress the story, I guess you just out of luck then, buddy, because the game is just telling you no. Man, this kind of shit just invalidates a player's want to approach the game in their own unique way. And it's a horrible ass design choice to force people into doing these whack ass side quests that just force more hours of playtime out of you. Because the game itself can't fill that time with a decent narrative or meaningful, fulfilling combat. That sense of fairness in battles, that shit's gone too, because this game pads out the stats of enemy demons and bosses. Yeah, I shit you not. The enemy demons have double, nearly triple the amount of HP as they have as a summonable ally. This game forcing you to grind to stand a reasonable chance against enemy demons and bosses with padded stats makes this game not fair. It's actively working against you and punishing you for not spending enough time doing shit outside of the story, and that's not only a miserable fucking design choice on its own, but it's the complete opposite of what Megami Tensei has been for years. The choice to level gate the damage you deal and damage you take removes that free-flowing sense of expressiveness and creativity that made me love Shin Megami Tensei to begin with. That feeling that I control the pacing of the story, that I can move on if I want to, or stick around and do side content if I want to, is completely gone. And I'm sat here forced to do menial ass tasks that I couldn't give a shit about to progress a story I also give no shits about. And y'all want to know the worst part of all this? This game got no challenge to offer at all. Outside of the force grinding, once you reach a level where your damage isn't getting crippled, this game is just easy as hell. There is not a single point where I felt like the game gave me a decent challenge, a point where I felt like I needed to change the way I approached a boss, or even switch up my party to tackle whatever's coming up next. The only thing that made me actually fuse off a demon was when their level was too low to do damage and it took too long to level them up. These fundamental problems genuinely had me considering dropping this game multiple times. When it wasn't the boring ass tone deaf story, it was the force grinding. When it wasn't that, it was the unsatisfyingly brain dead battles. There was absolutely nothing about this game that made me want to continue playing it. But I decided that it'd be unfair for me to judge the game if I didn't beat it fully, so I kept going on in the hopes that maybe something would get better. And goddamn, it got even worse. Alright, let me tell you something, bro. If all them issues I listed before made me a little upset, enough that it made me want to stop playing completely, then the endings of Shin Megami Tensei 5 broke me. <laughs> I mentioned before that the pacing of this game gives very little, if any, time to develop any of the neutral or chaos paths because for most of the game you're working with the angels towards their goals. The only real time I remember the angels, specifically Abdiel, their leader, getting their motives challenged was during the big conference between all the branches of Bethel, like 40 hours into the game. And after that, it's just a straight dash to the Thorn of Creation. You know, straight dash after all that boring ass grinding. I think this lack of development time is something the writers realize because they make sure to throw in massive exposition dumps between areas where the chaos and neutral reps talk about their goals and ideologies in some of the most uninteresting ways possible. The game throws up so many walls of text at you and expects you to care when they could have simply found a more natural way to weave all of this into the main plot of the game. So when it came time to decide what route I wanted to go for, and yeah, I said decide because this game literally lets you pick your ending instead of having your actions dictate how the game ends, which again, 
removes another aspect of the games that made them real fun and unique to me, I really couldn't find a reason to pick any of these over the other because I did not care. The game gave me no reason to do so, I literally just went with what I thought would have given me the most unique ending. So on my first playthrough, I decided to destroy the throne of creation because I don't know, if none of my previous actions mattered, then might as well do what sounds like the most interesting ending of the three. Yakumo seemed like the only character outside of Abdiel and this stupid kid that had time to really argue their viewpoints, and I've almost always ended up leaning towards chaos on my first playthrough of SMT games anyways, but because I was set on destroying the throne, Tao, a completely worthless character who dies 20 hours into the game only to come back right before the final area as an incredibly important character in the most convoluted ass way imaginable, suddenly becomes even more important to the plot and she's all like, well you're not trying to recreate the world, okay bye, and, and I shit you not, she disappears for the rest of the fucking game. So already on my first playthrough of this game, I had a character die early on, come back to life, die again, come back again, hype up how important they are, have the game hint even more at their importance, and then they just step the fuck out of the game never to return. What a worthless fucking character. But we all good, didn't really care about her, game gave me no reason to do so. Anyways, I make it to the end, I watch Yakumo die, don't care, and Nua, the bitch who's been tagging along with him leaves, we never see her again, okay fight the fusion of abdiel and the blonde kid don't care then we fight the fusion between glasses kid and this guy whose name i can't remember don't care and then the game ends i destroy the throne of creation and this random ass dude who's only ever shown up maybe three or four times goes what foolishness chaos will no doubt continue to grip this world and then that's it? This ending was so rushed and disappointing, it got me sitting there like, did I miss something? I'm no real stranger to the law and chaos pass lacking on the content in comparison to the neutral ending, but like, this was on a whole nother level. It just deadass felt like they removed something from this last part of the game and left it feeling real empty or incomplete. And then I realized something. This was the neutral ending? Uh, hold up, pause, like slow down for a sec. You mean Yakumo, the dude who believed that people unable to fend for themselves shouldn't be able to live, was our neutral hero? You mean the ending where I'm told the world will become gripped by chaos? A world where the agents of chaos will run rampant? A world where my main character watches the disarray below? You know, disarray, a synonym for chaos? This was the neutral ending? Because I did this all for humanity? I don't, I don't know. Oh, but don't you worry, bro, because it gets even worse. Yeah, I remember how I said it felt like the game ended way too soon. You know, like there was something missing. Well, the neutral ending completely removes the final boss with Lucifer from the game. What? What makes this shit so confusing is because no matter what ending you pick, Lucifer always says, Your will has been made known to me. Thus will I await you beyond heaven and earth. Alright then, so where the fuck was this man at during the neutral ending, dog? I don't really care what the reasoning for him not showing up was, but why the fuck would you allude to something that never happens in the story if my specific route does not have the content in there to begin with? It leads me to ask questions that I shouldn't be asking, especially in a plot that's this non-existent. This kind of shit is just embarrassingly bad story writing. Oh, but don't you worry, bro, because it still gets worse. None of these problems matter because this game has a true ending, which has more content, more bosses, and actually has some semblance of a conclusion. Y'all wanna know how you get the secret fourth ending? Well, of course, by doing a bunch of arbitrary side quests, including fighting a super boss that is a higher level and more of a challenge than the actual final boss of the game. Yeah. 
basically more grinding if you ain't already done enough of that before him. Y'all remember when the biggest issue people had with Shin Megami Tensei 4 was that the neutral ending was convoluted to unlock and it required you to finish a bunch of side quests to progress the story? Well, Atlas heard y'all's problems and decided to make the cool decision to not fix that at all. Thank you, Atlas. And this true ending comes packed with a whole lot more exposition dumping from Lucifer about some convoluted loophole called the Mandala System that essentially just undermines every single thing you've accomplished and could ever hope to accomplish in the game. And he's like, Hey kid, good job spending hours creating bonds with the gods and demons of this world in your efforts to erase all the gods and demons from existence, but that don't matter because this new mandala system thing I just made up means that nothing you do matters and your world will never last. Okay, bye. I beg your pardon? And this not like some classic SMT type beat where you're warned that the changes you make to the world will never last because humans are faultful beings doomed to repeat the same mistakes. Nah, dog. This is literally telling me that becoming the supreme being, recreating the world without gods and demons, for humans to take control of their own future will inevitably get torn apart. Not by the actions of the people, but because some fan fiction level headassery cosmic will of the universe saying it's so. And I just get to watch as life goes on from the perspective of a creator god waiting for the day somebody else will magically come through and try and whoop my ass. What a miserable fucking game. Shin Megami Tensei 5 is one of the most confused games I've ever played in my entire life. It wants to innovate so much, say so much, do so much for the series, but just fumbles the bag at almost every single opportunity. It removes so much of that flair and identity that to me made Shin Megami Tensei stand out to begin with. It's almost like this game is just an amalgamation of every reductive generalization the internet has ever made about this franchise. It's edgy with a lacking story and nearly non-existent one-note characters that's supposedly carried by its brutally difficult gameplay where you kill your friends and become God. But in doing all that, it forsakes those hard-pressing themes, those insane jaw-dropping story beats, them beautiful scene compositions, the meaningful dialogue, the hard questions, and that human aspect of Shin Megami Tensei that's always been at the series' core. There is so, so much I didn't get to cover in this video because I wanted to stick to the main points where this game really fell short, but god damn bro this ain't even the half of it i didn't even mention how poorly the game ran on a switch i didn't mention masayuki doi's horrible designs that come on bro get that shit off the screen i wanted to talk about how this game hides pretty important story beats behind dlc boss battles and not in the smt4 sense where you just get some cool little nuggets of lore to add to the experience i mean shit that would have really benefited being in the story to add some much needed depth to this plot I wanted to bring up how this game just wants so desperately to invoke thoughts of SMT Nocturne in your head. What with Magatsuhi, the Amala drum showing up for no reason, the game feeling like a sequel while trying to claim that these are two different worlds, or I don't know, maybe the fact that your main character does, does the fucking demi fiend pose for no goddamn reason <laughs> during the ending. I wanted to talk about how the localization was so poor, it created so many more plot issues that don't exist in the original Japanese version. I wanted to talk about how the music was real hit or miss, how most of the time you can get some of the best tracks Ryota Kazuka's dropped so far. But other times, it's the most generic ass, unfitting ass, tone deaf ass music I've heard in the series up to this point. I posted on Twitter that I beat the game and I didn't really like it. It's probably one of the worst games I've played all year. And I just got a bunch of smug pieces of shit up in my mentions all like, trying to act like it's weird that I didn't like the game, but I beat it. 
But, you know, I got my hands up. Y'all caught me in 4K for actually playing the video game before saying it's bad. I know I know that's a rare thing among Atlas fans. And the thing is, with other bad games, I can find some enjoyment out of poking fun at them. You know, find some amusement in a so bad it's good kind of sense. But with this game, everything is just so miserable and tedious. The only thing I wanted to do while playing it is find something else better to do. Nothing about this game really click with me and that shit is just kind of heartbreaking i wanted this game to be good so fucking bad <laughs> even when my hype was dying out and turning into concern i still hoped that this game would just prove me wrong and really surprise me but i was just sitting here waiting for change that would never really come and it's so weird seeing how much people are praising this game, bro. Like, yeah, like this shit got me feeling like I'm an insane person that just don't see what everybody else is seeing in it. Okay, I mean, like, low-key, most of this kind of just feels like people are putting the game on a pedestal because it's at some T5 and it's finally out after so many years. And it's... It's kind of funny watching people desperately scramble to find things to praise about the game. I've been saying this for a while now, but the reason why I go so hard when these games fall short is because I'd like the series to improve and blindly throwing out praise or hate towards them accomplishes nothing and muddies the water of what is and isn't genuine valid feedback. It's real important to demand better from your games. It's important to not be okay when games are lacking in places where they usually shine. Let them know when their stories felt empty. Let them know if their characters didn't feel realized. Let them know if you didn't rock with the changes they made with the gameplay. Let them hear that dissatisfaction with anything you thought wasn't up to snuff. Being okay with bad practices means that companies are always going to do the bare minimum for you because it don't matter, they got your money anyways. And if you genuinely like this game, I don't really care, more power to you, I'm glad you see something in it that I don't and probably never will. But to me, when this 2021 JRPG genuinely fails to live up to the games that came out before it, games that were made with a smaller budget, smaller team, less resources, less clout, and weaker hardware, Shin Megami Tensei 5 just winds up feeling like Shin Megami Tensei without the heart. Ah, but none of this shit matters. The game almost sold a million copies in two months, so Atlas is never gonna learn from their mistakes. Too bad, so sad. Bye-bye. <laughs>